Hi everybody. Um, hope this is working. If it is, you should be able to hear me. Um, and what we're going to do today is just for about 20 minutes, 30 minutes, just look at um, mindfulness and photography. Um, my name's Ray. I'm a fine art uh, portrait and print photographer. Um, I have a studio in Long Eaton Art Rooms. Uh, which is halfway between uh, Long Eaton and Nottingham. Um, my commercial work is mainly around fine art prints and portraits and my community work that I do from the places I work with people who might be uh, body conscious or they might be suffering from anxiety or depression or social isolation and what they do is they come along and we use photography and we, we encourage them to play and explore some of the issues that they're having informally um, and, and in doing so we collaborate and, and get some beautiful portraits out of it or fine art prints that mean something to them. Um, before I became a photographer uh, I, I worked in a charity as a senior manager and it was quite a stressful job. Um, lots of issues used to, that I used to bring home with myself and a few years back, it was getting a bit too much. It was uh, I was bringing work home with me, and so I was I, I started to look at um, ways that I could deal with this. And one of the ways that I did with this was was to start looking at photography and using it at weekends and in the evenings um, to just get rid of what had happened in the day and bring some stillness and help me get away from things. Um, and so I'd use mindful photography to try and slow things down, um, take some time for myself, uh, start seeing things from a, a different perspective and, and, and look for things that I wouldn't normally see because I was so busy and rushing around. Um, and I'd also use the photography to try and refocus myself and ground myself and and be more in the here and now um, rather than thinking what had happened during the day or at weekend um, or the week before or what was going to be happening tomorrow uh, or next week and the way I started to do this was by setting myself little challenges so I would at the beginning of the week I would sit down and I'd write some things that I were going to do with my photography and then I would try and do one each night um, or wherever I could. I mean, it, was, it, it, it is impossible to do it every night. Um, but that, along with meditation, started to help me um, get rid of all the stress I got, uh, all the anxiety. And so um, I continue to do it, and I've, I've continued to look at it, and I've, I've got a real interest now in uh, mindful photography and how it can help people. So... What I would also do is I would say to myself that I've, I've got some really nice cameras, but I, I'd say, well, I'm not going to use my camera. I'd either use my mobile phone or I'd use a little pint and shoot. And along with it, I would, I would, I, I would give myself some rules. I would try not to do it judgmental. Um, so I would avoid putting any pressure on myself. So I wasn't looking for technically great photographs. Uh, I wouldn't judge myself on the composition of them or how good they were. They were just little things that what would happen was I would go outside and just spend some time photographing a plant or a brick or uh, a wall. And what I found was happening was that those 10 minutes or 20 minutes would actually just take away everything that had happened during the day. Um, and it would help me refocus myself and, and, and grow myself in what I'm doing. And so what we're hoping to do here is what I'd like to do is set some challenges for you over the week so that you can actually go out and, and spend some time just with yourself and your camera or your mobile phone and bring some refocus and, and ground yourself. Um, 
there are some things that I would do when you go, wait, whatever you start, whether you decide to do the photographs in the house or whether you decide um, to do them outside. And one of the things is, is it's what they call arriving. So wherever you decide to do the photographs, I would just stop and just find yourself in that place and take two or three deep breaths and just relax yourself, shake your shoulders, just let everything just relax. And, and, and while you're there, um, feel the space that you're in, feel the air around you, feel the air hitting your face, hitting your skin, feel the wind, start to listen, um, listen to the birds, the car noises, the children playing, um, people have an argument, just let all those sounds come in and just flow away and just enjoy the moment of being there and just spend two or three minutes just arriving in the space where you are, whether it's in the house or in the garden. And then look at the little challenge that you've set and just set about it um, and just spend as much time as you can uh, just with yourself and enjoying it you can i find it's really helped during lockdown because you know even even just being trapped in the house is quite stressful and even just doing nothing is quite stressful as well because you feel as though you should be doing something or you start to feel a little bit guilty that you're not um but using these little exercises can actually just bring yourself with yourself for a little bit and uh relax you um So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you, set you seven little activities over the week. And then you can do them as many as you want or as few as you want. Um, and then if you can load your photographs up each day to the Casting Rainbow site or the Scraggy Moo site, um, what we'll do then is I'm back on Sunday next week at four o'clock. And we'll go through to, to some of the photographs and have a look what people have put up. Or we'll also have a look at um, some of the artwork that's been done um, and just have a chat about it. So I'll go through the seven exercises with you, but we will put them up one each day um, so you can have a go at them. Um, so the first activity, if you've got a pen and pencil, is all around texture. And what we'd like to do is go outside, arrive in the space or in the house, and then try and find something that's got quite a bit of texture to it. Um, and that can be revealed through the variances in shape, tone, and color depth. And just spend some time having a look at those textures and feeling them and, and seeing how they feel, and then take a photograph of it but not to worry about what the photograph looks like. Just have a go. The second exercise is all around food. Um, and this might not be a meal. It might be items in the fridge or in the, in the cupboard. And just take it out and have a look at it. Look at it from different angles, different perspectives. Go in quite close to it. Go at it for quite a distance. And... Take a photograph of um, some food items or a piece of food. The third one is abstract. So what I'd like you to do is go out and find something, add to photograph, which will give you quite an abstract look of it. And so, for example, you might decide to take um, a photograph of a wall and get close in so you don't always recognize what the object is when you're taking the photograph um a piece of bark a piece of canvas a piece of material it could be a bowl of rice it's all sorts of stuff and go in and get a, a photograph of that and, and and just play with it and just spend 10 or 20 minutes having a look and coming up there so activity four 
is all around shadows and this is a great one especially with this weather at the moment is to go outside or in the house and look where lights coming through and try and get some nice photographs of um, shadows and reflections exercise five is all around um, opposites and I'll give you an example so for example like a hot and cold tap um, colors which are opposite um, hot and cold again so it could be it could be something to do with um, cold water and a flame any anything that you can think of which might be seen as opposite activity six what I'd like you to do there is look at a self-portrait um, and of course that can be done anywhere or it could be something that connects with you that would um, you would recognize as connecting with yourself so that's quite a good fun one and then activity seven which is on Sunday what we'd like you to do is go around the house and find some rainbows um, from posters or make them from crayons or make them from pencils and we'll see how many rainbow um, photographs we can get up on the um, website um, so when you've done them try and load them up each day and uh, the important thing when you're doing it is to remember to slow down, take time with yourself and your camera and just think and enjoy the activity and don't forget to share them. Yeah, East Midlands News are looking for photographs and so they might see one of your photographs on the Facebook page or on the site and, and use them for their program. So that's East Midlands today looking. Um, just remember uh, that we're hoping to raise as much as we can and so if you can give please do and um, I'll see you next Sunday and thank you bye bye